Today is the 14th Sunday after Pentecost, even though it is the feast of the exaltation of the true cross, the Sunday today takes precedence. So we read, and the Mass is of the Sunday. And the epistle appointed to be read for today's Mass is taken from St. Paul's Epistle to the Galatians. Brethren, walk in the Spirit, and you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, so that you do not know what you would. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are immorality, uncleanness, licentiousness, idolatry, witchcrafts, enmities, contentions, jealousies, anger, quarrels, factions, parties, enmities, or enemies, murders, drunkenness, carousings, and all such like. And concerning these I warn you, as I have warned you, that they who do such things will not attain the kingdom of God. But the spirit of the fruit of the spirit is charity, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, long suffering, mildness, faith, modesty, continency, and chastity. Against such things there is no law. And they who belong to Christ have crucified their flesh with its passions and desires. And the Holy Gospel. is taken from St. Matthew, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will stand by the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore, I say to you, do not be anxious for your life, what you shall eat, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life a greater thing than the food, and the body than the clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow, or reap, or gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are not you of much more value than they? But which of you, by being anxious about it, can add to his stature a single cubit? And as for clothing, why are you anxious? Consider how the lilies of the field grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all his glory was arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes them, which flourishes today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more you, O oh you of little faith. Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we put on? For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. For your Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his justice, and all these things shall be given you besides. Thus for this Sunday's Holy Gospel. My beloved people, this morning, we are blessed to have a gentleman make his first Holy Communion, Mr. Wyman Vincent. Please let him come up to Communion first and alone before anybody comes up for Communion. Let us pray for him. Let us pray that Almighty God will bless him most particularly on such an occasion 
and that at the reception of his Lord and Savior for the first time, that it will be an experience that he shall never, ever forget. We ask him that while he has our Lord captive in his heart, that he will pray for us. There will be catechism class this morning. Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday of this week are ember days, and therefore they are days of fast and abstinence. Meat may be eaten once on Wednesday and Saturday. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. With desolation is all the land made desolate, because there is none that considereth in the heart. Today, my beloved people, we remember the finding and the presentation and, and the resurrection and the placing of the Holy Cross. There's a little story behind this incident. As the story goes, the emperor at that time, I forget what his name was, had more or less rescued the cross, which was in some kind of hostage situation, and that he was to carry, he had planned to carry the Holy Cross up the steeps of Calvary to return it to its place of origin. So emperor that he was, he dressed himself in all of his luxurious finery and silks and satins and silver and gold and all of that business surrounded by all of his entourage proper for an emperor of his stature. So he picked up the cross and started up the steeps of the mountain, but he got no place. For every step that he took forward, it seems that he was taking two steps backwards. He made no, made no headway whatever. There was a bishop in attendance, naturally, and the bishop noticed that this was happening. So he said to the emperor, Your Majesty, you're not going about this in the right way you will never be able to carry that cross in the condition that you presently are in. Get rid of all of your luxury and your finery. Be the man that is required for one to carry the cross of Jesus Christ. The emperor, being a fair-minded person, did as he was told. He got rid of all of his silks and satins and put on the purple robes of a sinner. Barefooted, he picked up the cross and he went the rest of the way unimpeded. My beloved people, is this not also perhaps the situation with us When it comes to be a, a time for us to carry the cross, when it becomes a time for us to want something, when it becomes a time for us to need something, when it comes a time for us to ask for something, And we make no headway. We get no place. 
And the harder our effort, the more we seem to lose ground. Why is that? Why is this the case? Perhaps, perhaps it's because we too are clothed in all of the luxuries. I'm not speaking here of the fine living and the fine this and the fine foods and this, that, and the other. I'm speaking of the luxuries of pride and self-will and all of the other kindred affairs that go with such. These are in themselves luxuries. And as long as we have these luxuries, as long as we are clothed with these luxuries, to pick up the cross and try to carry it, I won't call it an abomination, but I call it a mockery. The emperor that we just spoke of was fair enough and humble enough to take the correction. And he did what he was told. And immediately, the situation changed. We hear tell these things to us all the time and all the time. But do we pay attention? My beloved people, let us ask ourselves, why? Why doesn't God listen to me? What I'm asking for is perfectly legitimate. I'm merely asking to carry the cross and put it where it belongs. But I'm not getting anywhere. Something is wrong. Why can't I make any progress? Tomorrow also is a feast, if we can call it a feast, of the seven sorrows of the Blessed Mother. I think if we are ever really and truly going to reach the heart of the Blessed Mother, We probably can do it best of all in her moment of weakness, in her moment of sorrow, when she will be in a position to understand why and what and wherefore more clearly. These are occasions like today, like tomorrow. This past week we celebrated two feast days of the Blessed Mother, the Nativity, the Holy Name, tomorrow the, the, uh, the uh, Seven Sorrows. These are not just mere signs along the road that we read and say, hi, there's, there's another sign, another sign. These are signposts that have been placed before us as we travel our path, our road of great difficulty. And as we hear so often, never before have we, anybody, has mankind, as humankind, ever been faced with more trials and tribulations 
as we are being faced with today. Nothing, nothing is certain. For that matter, it never has been. But today, more than any time ever before, the uncertainty of everything glares at us. And we hurt. And we're sorry. And we're apprehensive. And we're depressed. And we wonder why? Why is God permitting all of this? Does not God see? God sees. God sees. But he wants to know for sure. He wants to see for certain the difference between those who love and those who do not love. And the fact that he has seemingly, maybe perhaps, perhaps obviously, ignored the ones who do not love and they get what they want. Nothing seems to stand in their way. They are successful. Everything they touch turns to gold. And here am I. Here am I, suffering, constantly reminding Almighty God, I love you. I want to do your holy will. I want to serve you. I want to give myself entirely to you. And here am I. And every time I say that, the cross that I'm carrying seems to pick up weight. Have you not ever noticed that? As we go up these steep steps to this mountain, up this mountain, the cross will get heavier. But we have the assurance that he knows what it is to carry a cross. And she knows what it is to have swords stuck in her heart. And we look to them. We must look to them. for the guidance and the strength that we need. And today's gospel is one of the most beautiful gospels in the book. Consider the lilies of the field. How much more are you than they? He knows you're here. He knows we're here. He knows what you are doing and what we're trying all to do. But I want you to read the bulletin today very carefully. And that we, in reading the bulletin, Think carefully to separate that which is purely and simply the activity of the mind, an intellectual activity which is dead, which is sterile, which is one of the luxuries that we have to get rid of, to shed, before we can pick up that cross and carry it. 
and rather look to the heart. That our love for God comes from our heart, not from our mind. If we can but just comprehend that, that hearing it, that we do hear it, and seeing it, that we do see it, that it comes from the heart. It has to be a desire, not just a mental flip-flop that we put ourselves through simply because we read it someplace. So, my beloved people, let us think on these things very seriously. And let us think also on what the, the epistle had to say this, 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 this morning. Look again at the difference between the two. If you serve the one, this is what you get. If you serve the other, this is what you receive. The matter is serious, the salvation of our souls. Nothing, nothing on this earth, all of everything on this earth, all that has ever been accumulated on this earth is equal to the importance of the salvation of my own personal, immortal soul. My beloved people, 